two years ago we wanted to build a Mars chamber, so we did what most physicists do. We went out to different foundations, asking them for money. All of these foundations turned us down, so we happened to build this Mars chamber out of our own pockets. This means that a lot of the chamber parts are actually resurrected from different scrap heaps we found around the cellar of the Miss Bohr Institute. One of the places where we found out we really could save a lot of money was in data acquisition. We used an Arduino Uno instead of LabVIEW, and that saved us about $5,000. So what I'm going to talk about here is how to program the Arduino for data acquisition, and how to store this data on a computer. For those of you who don't know the Arduino, it's this incredible little open source $25 board, which is programmed in C and is incredibly easy to program. Here's an example of a LED diode that blinks. The main loop going, turn on the diode, wait 100 milliseconds, turn off the diode, wait 100 milliseconds, and so forth. What I used it for was getting the data from an analog humidity sensor and from a digital pressure sensor using the I2C protocol. So here's a coding example on how to get the analog data acquisition to work. First of all, I declare some variables for ultraviolet radiation and relative humidity. Then we have a warning level for the ultraviolet radiation. After this comes the setup loop that is only run once, which basically tells us that we want to use the serial port and use pin 13. After this comes the main loop. Read the relative humidity from the input A0 and read the ultraviolet radiation from input A3. Then it runs a safety function, which will turn on the LED diode on pin 13 if the ultraviolet radiation value is above 63. Finally, it sends the relative humidity over the USB port, waits 5 milliseconds and then sends the ultraviolet radiation. The problem here is that I have a wrong constant. It should have been UV instead of average 3. Then there's a pressure sensor. It is digital using the I2C protocol. The first two bytes contains the pressure data, while the two last bytes contains temperature data. Of the byte number 4, the last 5 bits are actually junk. So these have to be killed by a bit shift at some point. If we move on to the code, you can see we first include the via library. This is what we use to communicate with the I2C protocol. Then we declare 4 bytes, A, B, C and D. We have an address called 40, that is the address for my pressure sensor. Then we have a setup loop, which starts the wire library, telling the Arduino to use port 4 and 5 in the analog in as data communication. After this comes the main loop, which requests 4 bytes of data from the address, which is 40 in this case, then receives A, B, C and D. Then at D we do the bit shift, remove the 5 last bits. After this we combine two of the 8-bit bytes into a 16-bit float variable using a function called word. As you can see I have a problem here because I write p plus, it should, it should only have been p equals integer of word a and b combined. When this is done I simply read out the value using the function 0 write as we also used in the analog example. So now the Arduino is stuck in a perpetual loop reading the sensors and sending it out the USB port. Now, how do we actually store the data? Well, I use Python. First we import numerical Python. Then we ready the program for the amount of data to log. Then we configure the serial port, create empty arrays and then we go into the main loop reading the data. For every fourth value, we calibrate add time save the array to a file name and if escape is pressed we exit the loop. This is basically the Python program running on the computer. This is how it would look in a non-float chart world. First we import the serial library which will take the data from our Arduino. Yeah, it is sent over a USB cable but the Arduino pretends it's a serial port. Then we have the time library which will be used to actually get a timestamp on our data. Then there's a function I don't know much about called msvcontrol. It basically allows us to quit the program nicely. Then we import the PyLab library, which is numerical Python, scientific Python and matplot library all combined into a nice little package. 
then we say, alright, we'll have four channels of data coming in. I probably should explain this. We have time, humidity, pressure and the ultraviolet radiation level. Then we declare the file name, I call it data npi. A printout saying, hey, we're going to start the program now, please press ESC if you ever want to quit. We have a setup function for the serial port, which I won't dig into. Then we create two empty arrays, an integer saying it's zero, we start the clock timer and while one is equal to one, that is while this loop will go on to infinity, we read the serial port, if there is data in the serial port, then we'll go on and put the data in a temporary variable called A once for every fourth value we receive in the serial port, we'll take the whole vector of A and add it to a vector array called B. Then we save B, our data file, add an integer to I, and if I is equal to 1, then we delete the first row of B. After this we check if the user would happen to press escape, in which case the loop exits. So this is the working cycle of the program. We add each value received to a vector. After the vector has collected all the values, we calibrate, print it out, add it to the main array and save the array. Alright, so our data is saved. Now we only need to figure out how to plot the data. And here we run into our first hurdle. PyLab cannot do live plotting. That is, it cannot be in a loop where it continuously updates a plot. But luckily, you can run PyLab live. What I mean by that is, you can create a Python script in one file and make it run the PyLab plotting routine in another file. Which simply loads the data file, plots the data file, adds title and time, and saves it as a nice little PNG file, which you can put on the web server. This means that wherever in the world I am, I, if I have an internet connection, can see what happens inside the mass chamber. And that's pretty neat. If we take a look at the code, the first Python script imports an operating system library and the time library, then it goes on in an infinite loop, taking and running the script below and sleeping for 60 seconds. Then it prints the iteration. The second script actually does a real plotting. It takes the first column of the dataset and divides it by 3600, which is the number of seconds there are in an hour, and plots it against the real data in column 1. Then it prints out the time for the title, and prints the title, puts in the labels and saves it as a figure I have called A. So now here's an example of probably the lamest web page in the world. Its only function is to show the picture and refresh every 60 seconds, but it works. Now since the Niels Bohr Institute has a crazy IT security, you cannot run a web server from within the firewall. But what you can do is you can place all this code in your public folder in Dropbox and then you have a web page you can view from wherever you are in the world.